Good afternoon and welcome to Bermuda College online information session. We're going to wait a few minutes for people to join us before we proceed with the presentation. Good afternoon and welcome to Bermuda College online information session. My name is Nachika Trot and I will be your facilitator for today. We are delighted that you have joined us this afternoon to learn about career teaching opportunities at Bermuda College. At this time, I would like to acknowledge Bermuda College President, Dr. Duranda Green. The agenda today will provide you with all of the essential details about teaching at the Bermuda College. You are encouraged to make comments and ask questions in the chat that will be addressed during the Q&A session. The presenters for today are Dr. Curtis Phyllis Tweed, Vice President, Academic and Student Affairs, Tammy Richardson, Dean, Division of Arts and Science, Kathy Swan, Dean, Division of Nursing and Allied Health. Latanya Roberts, Dean of Business, Hospitality and Technical Education. Lauren Alimu, Human Resources. At this time, I will turn the presentation over to Dr. Tweed to start. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, you know, as part of our strategic plan, which began in 2018 and carries us through to 2023, one of our goals is to ensure that Bermuda College is well staffed moving into the future. Um, and that means succession planning for us. We do have to anticipate some retirements in the next three to seven years. Um, and I must emphasize that this opportunity is not really an opportunity for seniors per se, because the mandatory retirement age for teachers is still 65. So we are trying to focus on building Bermuda's human capital, developing Bermuda's human capital, ensuring that Bermudians know what it means to be a faculty member <clears throat> at Bermuda College, to ensure that they have the qualifications and can apply when positions become available. Uh, I understand that we have about 165 participants in attendance. I want to thank you in advance for taking time to attend this event. And on behalf of Dr. Duranda Green and my colleagues, welcome. You thank may you. be aware that uh, Bermuda College is an amalgamation of technical education, academic studies, and uh, culinary programming. It was founded in 1974. We've been around for 45 years, moving into 46 years. I actually found my old membership card from way back when as a part of the Department of Academic Studies. And true to our roots, we've continued um, with these areas. We are accredited by NECHI, that is the New England Commission of Higher Education, which uh, accredits many institutions in the New England area, including Harvard and Yale. And this is important because it means that we meet standards. 
and meeting these standards speaks to the qualifications that we require for teaching and also enhances Bermuda College's international profile and recognition uh, in the programs that we offer. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tammy Richardson and I am the Dean for the Division of Arts and Science. There are eight associate degree programs that fall under the Division of Arts and Science. Under the Associate of Arts, we have Art and Design, we have Arts, we have Arts and Science, and Early Childhood Education. Under the Associate of Science, we have four programs. They are the Actuarial Science Program, Education, Marine Science, and Science. The courses offered are the general education courses, math and English. Some of the English courses would include freshman composition, literary analysis, writing for professionals, and oral communications. Some of the math courses offered would be college algebra, finite mathematics, business calculus, and statistics. Some of the courses that we offer under our art and design program are the introductory and intermediate drawing, the introductory and intermediate painting, introduction to media arts, the introduction to graphic design, two-dimensional design, and a few sculpture courses. Of course, we offer science courses. That would be biology, chemistry, physics, and earth and environmental science. We offer approximately 10 courses under the biology realm six chemistry courses, four physics courses, and approximately seven earth and environmental science courses. Under the social sciences, we offer sociology, psychology, economics, and a social work course. For example, psychology courses would start out with introductory courses, and then students would move on to abnormal psychology, human development, and learning theory. Under the humanities courses, we offer French, Spanish, music, religious studies, philosophy, history, film, and a few art history courses. Under the education program, we offer courses like Foundations of Early Childhood Education, Introduction to Child Development, Classroom Management, Exceptional Children. This is just a snapshot of the many courses offered that fall under the Division of Arts and Science. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kathy Ann Swan. I'm the Director of Nursing and Allied Health here at Bermuda College. This is one of Bermuda College's newest divisions, and our intent is to address the workforce needs of healthcare. So we are evolving very, very quickly. Presently, we offer three programs. The first one is the Associate of Science in Nursing, and that prepares you to become a registered nurse. The next one is the Associate of Science Pre-Health, and that prepares you for all the other um, um, professions in healthcare. And then lastly is the Pre-Medical um, Science Program, and that prepares you to um, apply for medical school to become a doctor. As you may be aware, medical, um, healthcare education involves theory and clinical practice. So alongside the lecturers, we also have what we call clinical instructors and preceptors. And these roles are, are meant to help the students connect what they learn in classroom into the clinical practice areas. So we utilize the experts in the field, um, ones that are current and relevant, and we prepare these roles by offering a clinical academy. And that's a, that's a two-day workshop that we offer in order for the students on the those and those roles to facilitate learning, to be able to assess students, and to evaluate students at a time as well. As we evolve, we're going to be looking more at allied health professions like medical laboratory technology and diagnostic imaging technology as well. Since nursing is a regulated profession, we do have the opportunity for those with bachelor's degrees to come and lecture or to be clinical instructors and preceptors as well. 
or those that are currently obtaining their master's degree. A really, really good opportunity when it comes to healthcare needs and those workforce needs in those professions on the island. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Latanya Robertson. I'm the Dean of the Division of Business, Hospitality and Technical Education. As you can see um, the slideshow, we offer seven associate, nine diploma and seven certificate programs, which consists of um, an associate of science and business administration, associate of science and um, computer information systems. We have a few certificates in the technical area, wood technology, um, HVAC, heat and ventilation and air conditioning, motor vehicle. Um, we also offer a few um, diplomas within the hospitality, um, diploma in hospitality and diploma in culinary arts. Um, under these um, programs, we offer a few courses within accounting, um, introduction to business. Um, we offer this law course, introduction to law, under management, we offer a few courses such as organizational behavior, small business, project management, and human resource management. Within our computer science program, which is um, aligned with the CompTIA certification, um, we offer programming, data management, et cetera. Um, within this program, we've had a few students work with the developers of the Tree Fork application um, which is a government um, app that notifies um, information, well, pushes information out to um, individuals on, in real time. We also have a few culinary programs and our culinary programs are accredited with the American Culinary Federation. And within this program and alongside the computer science program, we offer internship components to our students where they can go into the industry and apply some of the information that they have learned, um, put it into real life experience. Within our technical education department, we have a variety of disciplines such as wood technology, motor vehicle, plumbing, HVAC, electrical wiring, um, presently, we will be, we are looking for an HVAC instructor for the next academic school year. The requirements for a full-time faculty, um, while well, we provide hands-on instruction to cre create engaging learning environment, um, faculty evaluate students' academic performance using various assessments and techniques. Um, we also, they also incorporate technology by using active learning approaches, such as online resources. Um, faculty work with their colleagues to develop and modify curriculum for various degrees and certificate programs. And this is um, done through a um, program review that is taken on every three to five years. Um, we encourage everyone to obtain online certification and faculty also have to advise students um, about the courses they wish to take and how to achieve their goals. Faculty stay involved with changes within their, um, and are innovative in their field by various professional development activities and by obtaining another degree. Adjunct faculty are hired each semester and are exempt from some of the full-time faculty responsibilities and duties, such as advising. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Lauren Aline, and I'm representing the Human Resource Department. So how do you apply to Bermuda College? Well, you must have a cover letter, resume, transcripts, as well as two written work references and two written character references. We ask that all our lecturers will have a master's degree in the subject matter that they will be teaching and a minimum of two years experience, teaching experience at the post-secondary level. Now the Department of Educa uh, Tactical Education instructors without a degree instead must hold a journeyman certificate and 10 years experience in the field they instruct. Now, while it's preferred that persons have a master's degree, there are some areas and divisions that may accept alternative qualifications. For example, someone that is a teaching accounting, 
They may not have a master's degree, but they will have a bachelor's degree and a professional development or may have extensive years of experience in the industry holding a significant accounting post. Alternative qualifications may also be accepted, for example, in the areas of information technology or HVAC where the applicant have numerous certifications that are recognized in their prospective industries. Thank you. Okay, career advancement. Faculty can certainly progress on the academic ladder based on successful performance and by obtaining additional academic qualifications. After five years of service, a lecturer can submit a letter of interest for promotion to senior lecturer or professor. For one to climb the academic ladder, certain criteria is required. There are also opportunities for faculty to engage in professional development. Faculty participate in three professional development days over the academic year. There are also, they are also afforded opportunities to attend local or overseas conferences conduct research or write articles relative to their assignment here at Bermuda College. There is also a succession plan in place for employees interested in managerial positions or leadership positions. Bermuda College has a succession management policy that contains development tracks depending on one's interests. For faculty members who may be interested in administration, the management track can offer the following training and development opportunities to make up one's succession plan. For example, participation in the college's Leadership Development Institute. That's a one year long course that faculty can take here at the college. Training in finance and financial management, training in and exposure to the concepts of strategic planning, human resources management and labor relations principles, participation in executive and management level meetings and functions. There's also some coaching and mentoring. Financial support is also available to attend or participate in leadership training workshops here and overseas. <clears throat> Once a faculty member is on a succession management plan, the entire development period can take up to 18 months or longer. Thank you. Hello again. Um, now, should you become a college lecturer? It's a very rewarding career. Student success is paramount. Most of the students are here because they choose to be here, so they are the best and they're very eager to learn. Summertime, we do offer a summer session with a limited of limited amount of courses. However, it's still a time for preparing, so you might not have the entire summer off. Explaining information to the students is not easy, but we have to be very clear and concise. Grading can take quite a bit of time, but at the end, once you incorporate it and manage your time well, it, you will manage it well as well. Course evaluations can sometimes be harsh, However, it's a good opportunity to listen and look at how you may be do um, how you may do things differently as well. The holistic approach to students and their educational journey is paramount as well. So, getting to know that student on a very personal level, or learning a, a lot about them, their extra curriculum activities and things like that, is very very rewarding as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the presenters. At this time, we are going to be answering some of the questions that people have submitted. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to ask Dr. Curtis Tweed if she will be so kind as to answer the question. So the first question is, can you have a master's certification instead of a master's degree? I would say that depends on the subject area and also where you're getting the certification. I know sometimes in the UK, the way that um, the degree is, is um, classified may be slightly different from the US or Canada. So I would say it depends on where you're getting the degree and the subject area. Thank you. 
And our next question is, can teaching in other environments at, or at other level, levels come towards teaching experience requirements? I would say yes. Um, it depends, again, on, on what those environments are. But generally speaking, if someone has had some teaching experience, um, we will consider that as well, provided they have that master's level qualifications or the other qualifications relevant to the discipline. Thank you. Our next question is, are there alternatives to post-secondary experience, such as work as a professional trainer or subject matter expert? Uh, alternatives to post-secondary experience. Well, I think that question kind of relates to the prior question. Uh, if you've had teaching experience in another kind of environment, that certainly would be considered. Thank you. Are faculty required to be based in Bermuda? That is a very good question. At this particular time, I would say yes. However, given the changes that we're experiencing right now globally with the pandemic and our own switch to remote learning for the fall semester, I think that in the next three to seven years, that might be something that changes somewhat. But at the moment, yes, they are. Will we be expanding the course offerings or just looking to replace those who are due, to, due for retirement? Well, the focus of this campaign is, uh, is to make sure that we have folks in line to replace those who might retire. Uh, but it is also true that we are always looking at our course offerings and making changes. For example, in nursing and allied health, as we add programs, uh, the diagnostic imaging technology program, lab technician, there will be other opportunities for people to join the faculty, and that has nothing to do with anyone retiring. Those will be new positions. So uh, there are some opportunities in that area as well. Are there alternatives to online teaching certifications? Would different certifications slash experiences be considered? Well, teaching online is a very specific uh, kind of thing. And I would say at this point that if you have experience teaching online, that would be great. But uh, it really is important to have some exposure to certification programs because those programs really provide you with information on the latest technologies, latest approaches, best practices. And so from that standpoint, I would say getting that online teaching certification is important. Thank you, Dr. Curtis Tweed. Are you open to new curriculum areas based on experiences of potential staff, i.e. qualifications and experience in drama and theater? I don't see us hiring staff for areas that don't currently exist. However, um, the question about drama and theater is something that's kind of close to my heart and um, certainly is an area that we have talked about. Um, there may be other curriculum areas that we would consider on the basis of the jobs report when we see that there's a need in the island, um, but we would not hire people to teach in areas that don't exist. Thank you. I'm interested in health sciences. I am a board certified medical technologist with over 10 years experience. I have a master's degree in organizational management and are currently in a doctoral program. Um, and I guess he's asking, would he be considered to be a faculty member in health sciences? Uh, well, I and he doesn't, oh, I, yeah, it's a two part. I, yeah, it's a two parter. I, it's unclear to me what, what, the, what the degree is in medical technology, but as you may be aware in the health sciences, allied health, sometimes the degree requirements are slightly different and may not require um, a master's degree. So I would need to know more about what uh, you have. Um, if you have been teaching at all, that is something that we would consider. A lot of times doctoral students do work as teaching assistants in their programs. Um, this sounds like a very kind of individual question and we might need to actually talk with this individual further. So thank you, Mr. Martinez, for the question. 
I, I ask as I have a qualifications in Google for education with experience, with experience resulting from that. This is from Sarah that asked the question earlier about alternative certifications for online. Ah, okay. Well, Sarah, it sounds like uh, your qualifications from Google for Education might be consistent with an online teaching certification. But I would say, again, this sounds like an individual kind of question, and we could talk further about that. And perhaps you could provide us with further information about that uh, the Google experience. Is there a pathway to get two years of post-secondary teaching experience if you have the academic qualifications? Hmm. That's a, a good question, and that's a difficult question, actually. Um, in some cases, uh, there may be an opportunity to uh, teach as an adjunct as a college, depending on the subject area that we're talking about. Um, and, and I think that would be the primary way to, to be able to do that on island. Okay. Um, that is all that the questions that we have thus far. I would like to encourage the listening audience, if you have any additional questions in regards to general requirements, um, in regards to what we teach, I would encourage you to write them in the comments at this time. Are there any additional questions from the audience? And we thank you for joining us today. As a faculty member myself, I've had a quite a rewarding experience here at the Bermuda College. I have been employed at the Bermuda College for about 20 years in various roles. And I must say, two days are never alike when you teach at higher education. It is, it is such a worthwhile and rewarding experience. Our next question is, are there opportunities for those enrolled on mas in master's levels programs? Um, wonder if you can just clarify what you mean by opportunities. Are you talking about teaching opportunities? Um, if you can just clarify that for us, please. May the two written work references or the two written character references be from the same person? I will bring the HR representative in to answer that question. Well, I would say this, if the written work references, um, if the person that you work with as well as can speak to your character, then I would say yes, if they've had the, the experience. So I say yes, that is possible. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, this question has to do with the nail tech program. Are we planning on offering the nail tech program in the future? And if so, would we need faculty for that particular program? Dr. Curtis. That is actually a program that is offered in our professional and continuing education um, program. Uh, we actually were not covering faculty needs for that program because it's, it's rather different. Um, and they hire faculty on an as needed basis. Uh, my understanding is that it is uh, that 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 is something that they would have to address. Okay. What specific areas are need are needing lectures due to anticipated retirement? Uh, well, as um, Dean Roberts mentioned, we need somebody in HVAC this year. So if you are someone or know someone who has that journeyman certification and can teach in HVAC, which is uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, we really do need someone in that area now. Uh, in, in the upcoming years, the next three to seven years, some of the areas that we can anticipate include, um, generally speaking, English, psychology, sociology. Uh, those are the three that come to mind. Thank you. And I'm just going to go back to Wanda's question. She did um, provide some clarification. Are there teaching opportunities for those at the master's level? I, I, that's an interesting question. I would say that that depends on what happens at the point of application. Uh, if we're, we're talking about three to seven years down the road, if somebody, if we have a pool of applicants and um, the most qualified person is someone who is currently working on the degree, that certainly is something that we would have to consider. 
but that would really depend on the pool of applicants. Um, I would like to comment, um, Ms. Trott, on, on the question about how to get two years post-secondary experience. That is not something that we had actually uh, talked about, but I do know that's an issue um, on the island in terms of people coming home with degrees and then being told that they have to have experience for which there's no possible way to get the experience in order to qualify for a job. So what I would say about that is that we will take that under advisement and talk in our team about whether or not there are some ways that we can facilitate um, individuals who are otherwise qualified being able to gain experience. This next question has been asked by more than one person. How do you recruit adjunct lecturers and are there any application process, processes open for this? I think part of this is an HR question in terms of the application processes. Uh, we basically look for adjunct lecturers on an ad need basis, as needed basis. Um, so there may be an ad that goes out locally for a particular area. I know recently we did hire someone to teach in religion and philosophy, for example. Um, but in terms of the application processes, I think Ms. Aline would have to answer that question. Yes, with the application processes for the adjunct, the applications are the same as full time. So we are looking for someone with the master's degree or someone that has um, the, the um, experience or qualifications. So, yes, it's the same process. So we'll put an ad in the paper, um, asking for the requirements, and a master's degree is asked in that area, but depends on the area there is a possibility that your qualifications or your experience would um, make you qualify to apply for the position, but it is the same. Thank you, Lauren and Dr. Curtis Tweed. Um, is it possible to be an educator teacher that crosses various departments? An individual may have an MBA, but, also, but may also have a BA, BS in CIS computer and have IT experience? Well, an individual would be hired for one department primarily. Uh, and if there was a need for their expertise in another area, it would be possible for them to teach perhaps as an adjunct in the second area. Thank you. Um, this question is primarily asking about guest lecturers such, slash adjuncts who hold full-time jobs. Are we gonna be seeking those positions anytime soon. I think Dr. Curtis Tweed did address this question earlier. Would you like to add anything, Dr. Curtis Tweed? Um, no, I, there's nothing really to add, except as I said, that we do uh, uh, advertise for adjunct lecturers on an as needed basis. Uh, guest lecturers, not so much, um, although it depends. If we have a special program and we are actually developing a special program, coming up in insurance, there, there will be opportunities there for guest lecturers, but it's not the same thing as hiring an adjunct to teach an entire course. Um, and if you are an adjunct at the college, of course, you can hold a full-time job doing something else because adjunct lecturers only teach one or two courses in a semester. Thank you. The next question is, my question, is there an adjunct as an adjunct, is there an age requirement? Well, the teaching uh, requirement, um, I, I believe the retirement age is 65, and I think that applies to adjuncts as well as full-time personnel. Okay. Are there any other questions from the listening audience? Uh, I thought I saw a question from Amode Nyabanga. I'm not sure that we addressed that. Okay, I know a couple of persons have been asking who they contact for further information. Okay. And that is the contact information. What was that name again, Dr. Curtis Twee? It was Amodi Niobanga. I'm just scrolling through trying to 
find that question. In the meantime, if any of our other listening audience have questions, please feel free to post them in the chat. Uh, I see a question, are there vacancies for a math or education lecturer? Mm, not at this time. Uh, there may be a possibility for an adjunct position sometime in the near future, but not full time. Um, I don't see that person's name, Dr. Curtis Tweed. That's okay. Um, so Mr. Nirvanga, um, uh, we probably cannot address your question at this time, but you can, ah, there it is. Um, oh, okay. His question was about the yeah. age requirement for the adjunct. Okay. I yes. didn't see that at the end of it. Sorry. Yes. yes. Um, do we have any additional questions from the audience that you need to be clarified or any other questions in regards to the teaching posts here at the Bermuda College? Um, I'm just going to bring up all of the presenters today to see if you have any additional questions at this time that we may be able to answer. Any additional questions? Okay. Um, there's one question here. Are you looking to engage academics in the social sciences? So this question had to do with the social sciences. Sorry, you're going to start again, Dr. Tweed. <laughs> uh, yes, I would say in the next three to seven years, yes, we are. Mm -hmm. I would say in the next three to seven years, yes, we are. Okay. What social work courses are being offered, and is there an area of need for lecturers? We currently have an intro to social work course, Dr. Virgil. Um, so that's not an area where we need, um, we're looking for full-time lectures at this time. However, I, however, I would say that, um, social work is actually an area of development that we're looking into. Okay. Thank you. Um, the next question is, are you looking to engage academics in the social sciences, which I think that we answered earlier? Um, and I think that was all of the, do you consider a professional degree, e.g. MD, equal to an MSc degree? I believe we just lost Dr. Curtis Tweed. Yeah. So the question is, do you consider a professional degree, e.g. MD, equal to an MS degree? Um, in the absence of Dr. Tweed, I would just take and comment here. A lot of the qualifications in regards to the academic degrees does rest also on our accreditation processes. And I'm also going to bring in the HR direct um, HR2 assistant answering that question. Uh, accreditation to make sure that um, that will be accepted. But I do think that definitely is a question for uh, Dr. Curtis too. But yes, we can look at that. Yes. Okay. Are there any other questions from the listening audience? We would like to just take this opportunity to thank you for joining us here today. I see Dr. Curtis Tweed is back. <laughs> Yes, Dr. Curtis Tweed. Um, yes, I know that you, we lost connectivity there for a minute. Um, the question had to do with uh, persons having an MD and how does that relate to a person with a Master of Science? Can you hear us, Dr. Curtis Tweed? Yes, uh, I, I think there was a question there to ask about uh, whether an MD would be acceptable versus a, an MSc. Yes. Yes, do you consider a professional degree, e.g. MD, equal to an MS degree? Yes, the answer to that question is yes, particularly in pre-health and pre-med. Uh, because remember, those programs, some of those programs are vocational programs, and they do require the teaching of expertise in a particular vocation. 
So uh, an MD would certainly be um, welcome in those areas. Okay. The next question I will ask for Dr. Curtis Tweed and Kathy Ann Swan to answer the question, are there any adjunct or clinical instructor positions in the nursing department? Also, what will be the requirements for these positions? Hi, good afternoon. Um, presently, there are not. However, um, one of the requirements would be to attend our clinical academy and also at least have a bachelor's of science or a bachelor's degree in nursing if it's for nursing. Um, for allied health, it would be the same thing, having a bachelor's degree at the, at the minimum level. Um, for the, for if it's medical laboratory technology or in diagnostic imaging technology as well. But feel free, um, I, can, um, I can speak with you offline as well. Thank you, Kathy. Are there any additional questions before we call upon Dr. Curtis Tweed to give her final comments? Are there any additional questions about teaching opportunities here at the Bermuda College? It looks like we lost Dr. Tweed again. <laughs> Technology, it looks like she's coming back now. Yeah. Um, so we will just like to, okay, Tammy Richardson, I believe this question is for you. We'll be looking for foreign language teachers in the near future. Hi, okay. Um, no, we will not be looking for foreign language teachers in the near future. We are offering French and Spanish now, but we do have a full-time French and Spanish lecturer that just came on board this year. Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome back, Dr. Curtis Tweed. <laughs> uh, we was just in the process of wrapping it up. And there doesn't seem that like there's that many more questions um, from the audience. Um, and once again, I would like just to encourage our listening audience, if you do have additional comments or questions and seeking clarification, you can contact Dr. Phyllis Curtis Tweed or Lauren Aline. So Dr. Curtis Tweed, I'd like to call on you at this time to give the vote of thanks to our listening audience before we close out this session. Well, again, I wanna thank you all for taking time to attend this session. If you have further questions, please do feel free to contact me or uh, Lauren Aline if the questions are about human resources, me if you have questions about the academic components of this. Uh, we are looking forward to um, developing, as I said, Bermuda's human capital and we look forward to interacting further with you. Again, thank you so much. Thank you to the listening audience and have a great day.